Alexandro Volta was an Italian physicist who was involved in many discoveries related to electricity. In 1800 he announced a new electrical device, the voltaic pile. This device was made of alternating discs of zinc and copper, with each pair separated by a brine soaked cloth. Attaching a wire to either end produces a continuous current of low intensity. This was the first direct current battery. Two years later, in 1802, Dr. William Cruikshank, an English chemist, designed the first electric bat battery capable of mass production by joining zinc and copper plates in a wooden box filled with electrolyte. He also performed experiments leading to electroplating. In 1836, John Frederick Daniel, a British chemist, invented his Daniel cell. This was a great improvement over the voltaic cell used in the early days of battery development. A few years later, in 1859, the French inventor Gaston Planté developed the first practical storage lead acid battery that could be recharged, a secondary battery. This type of battery was a forerunner of all lead acid storage batteries and the Planté type battery is still used today where long life and reliability are required. In 1866, the French engineer Georges Leclanché patented the carbon zinc wet cell battery called the Leclanché cell. By 1868, 20,000 of Georges Leclanché's cells were being used with telegraph equipment. Twenty years later, in 1886, Dr. Karl Gassner, a German scientist, patented the first dry cell with zinc as the container for the other elements as well as for the negative electrode. The electrolyte was absorbed in a porous material and the cell was sealed across the top. In America, by 1896, the Nation Carbide Company, later Union Carbide and Everready, had produced the first consumer dry cell battery. At the end of the 19th century, in 1899, Valdemar Jungner of Sweden created the first nickel cadmium battery, the only direct competitor to the lead acid battery. The nickel cadmium battery offered several advantages in certain applications. Even early nickel cadmium batteries were physically and chemically robust. With minor improvements to the first prototypes, energy density rapidly increased about half that of primary batteries significantly better than lead acid batteries. At the beginning of the 20th century, in 1901, the nickel iron battery was developed by Thomas Edison in the USA and was used as the energy source for electric vehicles such as the Detroit Electric. The main advantage over nickel cadmium was cost, but due to the poor efficiency of the charging reaction and more pronounced formation of hydrogen, gassing, the nickel iron technology soon became less relevant. In 1932, improvements to the existing nickel cadmium systems were achieved when the German duo Schleck and Ackermann invented the sintered plate. This allowed for higher currents and reduced volume. This made them particularly useful for aviation applications. The major developments in the nickel cadmium technology were completed in 1947 when French scientist Newman succeeded in completely closing the cell. Thus the sealed nickel cadmium battery became available and this was the predominant portable rechargeable battery until the arrival of nickel metal hydride and later lithium ion batteries. In the mid 1960s Louis Frederick Uri after testing a number of materials, discovered that manganese dioxide and solid zinc worked well coupled with an alkaline substance as an electrolyte. Everready immediately switched production to URI's prototype. In 1980, the brand was renamed Energizer. Modern alkaline batteries, due to technical improvements, can last as much as 40 times longer than the original prototype. Alkaline cells have largely replaced the zinc-carbon primary battery. 
The last major development of the lead-acid battery was the valve-regulated lead-acid battery in the mid-1970s. Here the open separator was replaced by an advanced glass mat separator and a low pressure vent was used. This increased the internal recombination of the hydrogen and oxygen given off to something approaching 100%, thus eliminating the need to top up with water. However, this created its own problems. In recent times we have had commercialisation of the nickel metal hydride battery and the commercialisation of the lithium ion battery, particularly for small units. However, in industrial applications, lead acid and nickel cadmium batteries still remain the pre predominant battery technologies.